much eager to listen to you, sir. Thank you on behalf of Dattakala Shikshan Samstha from Dattakala College of Pharmacy, Institute of Pharmaceutical Science and Research for Girls and Anusaya Institute of Pharmacy. Yes, please welcome and please start, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I must appreciate the efforts of all the faculty members, your entire team for uh, arranging this particular session for all the students because uh, there are there are very rare institutions, rare pharmacy institutions who took efforts in identifying the, the potential of startup and entrepreneurship in pharmaceuticals and in healthcare. And your institution is one of them. So I appreciate principal sir, uh, Sireska sir and your entire team uh, for taking the effort in arranging this particular session. Uh, now, without wasting much time, I would like to continue this session. So I'll, I'll just share you uh, my PowerPoint presentation so that I can continue with, with uh, this will be more of a discussion where I'll be briefing you all the opportunities, all the facts and figures of uh, startup and entrepreneurship opportunities in healthcare. Yes, uh, so I guess uh, my presentation is visible to you all. Uh, I guess I'm audible to everyone. Uh, let me check it once again. Uh, please type yes if, if you are, you know, visible to this particular slide, this particular presentation. And if I'm audible, please type yes in the live chat so that I can understand. I guess I'm audible to visible. Please type yes if it is visible. Thanks to this uh, live chat, we will make it more interactive so that uh, like how we, you know, have a sessions in our classroom. Similarly, we can have it uh, through this interaction. So startup and entrepreneurship opportunities in healthcare. Now, when we talk about startup and when we talk about entrepreneurship, before we go in detail about uh, what are the opportunities in healthcare, what are the opportunities in pharmaceuticals, I would like to tell you about what is startup and what is entrepreneurship because there is a difference between a startup and an entrepreneurship. So first of all, let's first understand startup. So startup is basically no doubt it's a business. So startup is a business with innovation. So this means when your business, it has some innovation, then it is known as startup, your startup or your business. It can be a product or it can be a service. Your product should solve customer's pain point or customer's burning problem. When your business, which in turn a product or service, when your business, it solves the problem of the customer, then we call it as startup. So there is a clear cut difference between a conventional business, like for example, retail pharmacy, for example, wholesale pharmacy, for example, pharmaceutical manufacturing, these are all conventional businesses. But when we talk about startup, startup is completely different. No doubt it's a business, but it's a business with innovation. So when we understand or when we classify startup and conventional businesses in pharmaceuticals, there is a difference. For example, as I said, in business, in conventional business, we have examples like retail pharmacy, wholesale pharmacy, distributor, pharmaceutical manufacturing, likewise. But in startup, we have excellent examples like we have 1MG, we have Niramai, we have, you know, uh, some of the uh, healthcare startups, like whatever startups we know from, you know, even Practo, Practo could be one of the example in startup where we have used technology, we have, we have used innovation. Okay. Now, what is entrepreneurship? So entrepreneurship is basically to identify and to solve customers pain point with your product or with your service. So entrepreneurship is basically this is uh, to be very frank, like how you search for a job. So there you become an employee. But when you take a road of entrepreneurship, you become an employer where you recruit people, where you recruit manpower. So entrepreneurship is basically when you 
basically start a business you ideally making a difference in society by solving their customers pain point now startup and entrepreneurship opportunities in healthcare now why i have used a word healthcare why i have not used a word pharmaceuticals it could be a session like startup and entrepreneurship opportunities in pharmaceuticals but let's consider yes being a pharma professional we should target entire healthcare sector and not precisely pharmaceuticals because pharmaceutical is one of the part of healthcare sector healthcare sector is huge sector and yes after covid after this pandemic india 2020 after india 2020 healthcare is the sunrise sector of india so yes no doubt healthcare sector we have n number of elements like we have medical we have hospital management we have pharmacy we have pathology we have nursing we have healthcare technology likewise even we have medical devices so these are different elements in healthcare now when you seek opportunity in you know a business opportunity you should consider healthcare as your opportunity and not just pharmaceutical so that maximum opportunities will open for you so in this session what i have did is i have you know classified this session in three different parts so first i am going to share you all the facts and figures about startups about healthcare startups in india number 2 i'll be sharing you the pain points the burning problem of our healthcare sector so that you can ideate so that you can innovate something right and number 3 is i am going to share you all the opportunity for you as a diploma pharmacist or as a degree pharmacist or as a m pharm pharmacist which will be open for you uh, as far as conventional business is considered okay so first of all let us first understand whenever you are doing a business qualification doesn't matters i repeat whenever you are doing a business qualification doesn't matters even the best example which we have today is the chairman of india's largest pharmaceutical company that is sun pharma the chairman of sun pharma is not a pharma graduate we know dilip sangvi so mr dilip sangvi he is the chairman of sun pharma and he is not even pharma graduate he is not even graduate uh, sorry uh, doctorate okay so dilip sangvi when we see the qualification of dilip sangvi he is become bachelor of commerce but still he is the owner he is the chairman of india's largest pharmaceutical company also he is the second richest indian so ideally any business any startup it does not you know require a qualification it does not ask for your eligibility anyone can start a business now why you should consider business opportunities in healthcare because you have basic foundation knowledge in pharmaceuticals and when you apply this basic knowledge foundation knowledge of pharmaceuticals in business then yes you create maximum solutions you create maximum opportunities in business for yourself okay so as i said what is or how should i define startup so startups they create solution for problem so let's make it interactive i want from you names of different startup which you know for example flipkart okay for example paytm these are some of the examples of startups okay so i want you to you know type in comment box type in live chat i want to know how many startups which you know i am not talking about only healthcare startups whatever startups you know like 1mg is there practo is there flipkart is there snapdeal is there 1mg is there uh, even amazon is there paytm is there swiggy is there zomato is there so whatever startups you know you just you have to just type in live chat okay now startup yes startups create solution for a problem now when so startups create solution for problem so startup is a business with innovation when you have innovation in your business then we call that business as startup now ideally a startup company is working to solve a problem where the solution is not obvious 
and success is not guaranteed i repeat success is not guaranteed because in india more than 80% of the startups have been failed in their first 5 years i repeat in india more than 80% of the startups have been failed in their first 5 years because success is not guaranteed right so startup is a company which works or which is working to solve a problem so right now when we look at indian startup ecosystem india is the third largest or india has the third largest startup ecosystem on this planet so number 1 as usual united states number 2 is china and number 3 is india so india right now we have more than 38000 official startups recognized till april 2020 and we are one of those 38000 plus startups officially startups which have been recognized by startup india so startup india is a commission under government of india which is being operated by invest india federation and they recognize official startups right so when you look at the even uh, startup india portal www.startupindia.gov.in you can you know have a list of all these 38000 startups now when we see evolution or you can say revolution of indian startup ecosystem before 4 years in 2016 we had only 500 startups it grows around more than 8000 plus startups in year 2018 and today we have more than 38000 plus startups in our country now when we distribute or when we see classification of all these startups maharashtra has highest number of startups in our country so maharashtra even today we have more than 3500 startups officially recognized startups in our state so maharashtra is at number 1 position city wise when we look at uh, city wise figures bangalore we we call bangalore as startup hub of our country or silicon valley of our country now there are n number of sectors like healthcare is one of the sector when we look at uh, the businesses there are some more than 25 different sectors like like healthcare we have automobile it education banking agriculture food textile likewise we have more than 25 different sectors healthcare is one of them and pharmaceutical is one of the element of healthcare sector now highest number of startups in india they are in it services number 2 healthcare and life sciences number 3 is education or edutech startup even you have excellent examples you can see even they have grown like anything during this lockdown and pandemic the the startups like byjuice the startups like an academy the startups like udemy these are all edutech startups and number of edutech startups they are rising in india like anything now when when we talk about precisely about healthcare startups so in india we have some approximately 5000 startups in india okay now overall investment in health health tech startups are increasing day by day banks even uh, private you know uh, industries they are you know investing like anything on healthcare startups total technology startups uh, in last year it grows around more than 5000 plus startups every year it grow it grows around 7 to 10% year on year addition new startup addition is 2300 now uh, when we taken or when you take around the total classification of all the startups 68% of the startups in india they are in metro cities bangalore delhi mumbai so these three cities they form a base of 68% of startups so this means tier 2 tier 3 and tier 4 regions right now this is the time when they are growing their startups when we see startups it is all about innovation and when we when we know the innovation in our country we have excellent grassroots innovations so this thing has to be mentioned here is maximum innovations are from grassroots maximum innovations are from tier 4 the rural india and when we see commercializing these innovations we are lagging the tier 3 tier 4 cities are lagging b2b startups they are forming 40 40% of the overall startups so there are multiple categories in business that is b2c b2b and b2g that is 
B2B is business to business when you or suppose whenever you are purchasing anything from a vendor, it, it gets around B2B. Okay. Udan is the best startup. Uh, when, when we talk about B2B startup, B2C is direct to consumer or direct to customer. That is B2C. B2G, when you are offering a services to government, that falls under B2G category. Now startups, we have only 540 startups which are solving core India's problem. Core India's problem, we have population, pollution, literacy, uh, wastewater or waste management. Uh, crime, women's safety, sanitation, hygiene, these are India's core problems. And ideally, we do not have much startups who are working or who are solving India's core problems. So this itself is an opportunity for you. Okay. Now, number of incubators and accelerators. So at university level, at institution level, we have incubation centers right now. Incubation center, uh, to be tell you precisely what is incubation center, so incubation center is a center of excellence at institution or at university, which helps startups to grow. Like you, you might have, uh, you know, heard this particular word incubator for hospitals. So every hospital, they have incubator where newborn babies, you know, take birth and we keep some of the newborn, newborn babies at this incubator. Why we keep them in incubator? Because whatever environment which is necessary to you know get a maturity or to until unless and until that baby gets mature we keep it at incubator this is the same uh, same concept which we apply at institutional incubation center where your incubation center will facilitate will help will uh, you know provide facilitate that particular environment to new ideas or new innovations for startups more than 1,700 advanced tech startups are there, like artificial intelligence they are using, machine learning, big data, cloud, all these startups are there, advanced tech startups. The average age of startup founder is 28, right? Today we have one of the advantage of our country is that is demographic dividend. And that is why we have vision 2020, because this is the year where we have 64% youngsters population in our country. The average age of Indian is 29 and this makes the youngest country India as youngest country on this planet. So right now the average age of startup founder is 28 right now. This is very useful information for you where I'm focusing more on student startups. Now what is student startup? So these are the startups which has been started or which is being started by the student itself. So when we see the culture at IITs and IIMs, even uh, there are different uh, renowned universities as well, where the students in second year, third year, or in final year, whatever projects they have, these students, because of their innovation, because of their ideas, whatever uh, innovations they, you know, inculcate in their projects, they actually commercialize this project and they sell their products, their ideas in the market. So when you sell your product or your service in market, when you commercialize it, this is your startup. And right now the engineering students, they are coming with excellent ideas for the startups. So student startups are growing by 30% every year. Every institutions right now, they are like how they focus on uh, job seeker candidates. Similarly, they are focusing on the candidates who have excellent innovative ideas. So even pharmaceutical institutions, there are very rare, but even pharmacy institutions, they are taking efforts in, you know, placing this innovation ideas into a commercialized product so that we can initiate maximum student startups. And this is the motive of this particular session. Okay. Even when we see educational qualification, 50% of the startup founders, they are engineers. 50% of the Indian startup founders, they are engineers, 25 startup founders are MBA. So let's talk about healthcare startups. Now, healthcare startups in a country with only one doctor per thousand people. Now, this is the, you know, we, we can call it as a surprising thing for us where we have uh, the second highest population 
in a country but when we see the the count of doctors when we see the number of doctors we have only one doctor per thousand people okay now healthcare startups now when we bring attention to all the sub sectors in healthcare we have these sub sectors ahead of you so when we think of healthcare startups we have n number of opportunities which gets open for you right the opportunities in online pharmacy personal health management home healthcare fitness and wellness telemedicine diagnostics biotech r&d medical devices healthcare it biopharmaceuticals and genomics these are the sub sectors in healthcare startups right now we know different examples of all these sub sectors as well so this could be the crucial information for you where we have or you have ahead of you the sub sectors and their related information ahead of you okay now what should we target when we you know ideate or how how startups get born see there is a process to start a startup the initial part to start a startup is basically a problem statement for example if suppose uh, even there were some 3 to 4 students uh, who you know uh, came ahead and they thought of you know starting the startup so what we told them is you have to just visit one hospital each day for the entire week so these students they visited multi specialty hospitals seven days and seven hospitals and what they you know we what we instructed them is they have to reach at hospital they have to meet receptionists they have to meet pharmacists they have to meet surgeons they have to meet doctors they have to meet patients they have to meet the relatives of the patients whoever are the stakeholders of the hospital they have to meet and they have to list down what problems do they face what problems doctors are facing what problems patients are facing what problems their relatives are facing who are there in waiting area what problems pharmacist is facing so they could bring a list of 490 problems at the end of a week so these are the common problems and at every hospital so you have to pick down the common problems at every hospital okay and you have to target your segment in order to create a solution that is the second stage of startup first stage is to identify a problem and second stage is to brainstorm or is to you know uh, ideate a solution to solve that particular problem so out of 490 problems you have to pick only two to three problems you have to brainstorm with your team and you have to ideate for your solution this solution can be anything it can be creating an website it can be creating an app it can be creating a product it can be product and service it can be anything that is based on the product uh, that is based on the problem so you have to target these solutions into either of these three segments first it should be affordable solution so first of all you have to think whatever solution you are brainstorming it should be affordable number 2 it should create for preventive health care okay so either of these segments either it should be affordable or it should be in preventive health care or it should be in portable medical devices these are the three target segments which indian healthcare startups right now they are focusing and even in post covid time or in after 2020 there is much more innovations are going on in healthcare sector much more innovations are going to you know come in the market in the form of these devices or applications or uh, some of the kits diagnostic kits okay but either of these segments should be there so these are some of the well known examples of top indian healthcare startups in all the categories so whatever sub sectors we have seen all these are the examples in uh, all the whatever sub sectors which we have seen so first of all online pharmacy so online pharmacy we have a popular example of healthcare startup in india that is 1mg okay then we have pharmacy netmeds myramed sasta sr okay these are some of the examples of online pharmacy second personal health management my upchar and cure joy these are some of the personal health management platforms 
where people used to come people used to you know uh, whatever edits are there or whatever advices are there from their experts from their healthcare team they used to apply all those personal tips and wellness tips for uh, their health management number 3 is medical devices there are n number of companies which are growing in this medical devices industry ue life sciences forus health beto wealthy therapeutics we titan these are some of the well known examples in medical devices next is fitness and wellness even you might have seen there are uh, many of the cricketers many of the bollywood stars they are becoming investors in fitness and wellness for example uh, we have one example that is uh, i guess it is cure fit so cure fit the investor for cure fit is rithik roshan even virat kohli virat kohli he has invested much more on fitness and wellness startups so these are the celebrities who are actually realizing the potential of the the startups which are in fitness and wellness industry and they are investing in these startups so these are the some of the examples like peter niti is there peter niti is has been recently awarded in last month it has been awarded as startup of the year in uh, healthcare category peter niti healthify me is one of the startup goq which is you know uh, if if you could have seen the tv commercials of goq the brand ambassador for goq is uh, akshay kumar so right now even these celebrities they are identifying the potential of this fitness and wellness uh, applications or the startups health card is there home healthcare healthians healthians is the best example even the cricketers yuvraj singh is the investor for healthians he has invested 300 crores in healthian startups okay next is diagnostics so in diagnostics niramai even niramai niramai has excellent story niramai has excellent innovation component this targets for diagnosis of breast cancer early age diagnosis of breast cancer they are coming with the solution of artificial intelligence and machine learning even niramai this year it is awarded as startup of the year in 2020 for healthcare category so niramai is the finest example in diagnostic startups so uh, along with diagnostic one more uh, category that is healthcare it practo i can tell you practo could be one of the great example for you as uh, early a startup even today when you see yourself in second year third year or fourth fourth year of your education practo there are there were two friends at the age of 20 these were nit students at studying at bangalore for their engineering so these were second year engineering students at the age of 20 where they innovated a platform which is known as practo so practo is basically started by two second year engineering students and practo is right now a unicorn startup innovator health plex pharma rack attune live health even live health is based in pune maharashtra so live health is again finest example of healthcare startup and then telemedicine so practo is in telemedicine as well librate is there docs app is there mfine is there so these are some of the examples of top indian healthcare startups these are some of the highlights of uh, the essential or the you know popular startups in healthcare startups so netmeds which is one of the biggest medical startups in india and which is india's leading online pharmacy so right now they have over millions of active customer and they deliver uh, whatever medicines they have to more than 19000 pin codes next is impactguru.com so impactguru.com is basically the largest crowdfunding platform in india for medical expenses now impactguru.com this is based from mumbai and it is founded by uh, two of the co-founders that is piyush jain and kushbu jain in 2015 so it is basically a technology startup we we call it as crowdfunding uh, platform what they do is uh, whenever for example uh, many of the people or many of the social media sites you might have seen where they ask for donation if someone has someone's friend 
uh, he is or a relative he is in need of some medical expenses for some major surgeries or operation they create or they use this impactguru.com uh, crowdfunding platform with the help of which they go on social media they go on internet and they ask for the funding they ask for donation so whoever is interested they can donate for this cause some of the ngos are there some of the social uh, enterprises are there who are basically raise funds for these medical emergencies so right now over 20000 patients have benefited by uh, 2 lakh more than 2 lakh donors from this impact guru doc plexus is one of the startup which is founded by an iit in and right now they have more than 2.75 lakh doctors on its platform like see to simplify this example like how you have swiggy and zomato where you have a list of different restaurants like you have amazon and flipkart where you have n number of list of different sellers similarly doc plexus is a aggregator platform for doctors all the doctors they get connected on this particular platform so this is basically a forum for a doctor to go whenever they face a new disease in their patients or whatever or they can use uh, or they can take an advantage of this platform where they can create a community there they can create a networking mera medicine is one of the startup which is into online medical service which is founded by pankaj uh, gupta so they provide home delivery of medicine in 2 to 12 hours this is the usp of mera medicine they deliver medicine 2 to 12 hours with 50% 15% discount ikin care is one of the startup so ikin care is one of the most innovative healthcare startup in india and the main purpose of this ikin care is to give the people to save their medical documents and access them anywhere so this is basically a cloud service or cloud storage where you can save your medical uh, database or medical documents your diagnostic reports all the files and all the documents of your hospital okay next is practo so this is the example which i i was talking about so practo is one of the world's leading healthcare startup and it has been founded in 2008 by two engineering students shashank and abhinav from nit bangalore so basically practo helps in searching for any healthcare expert or to book their appointment with doctors or online doctor consultation or getting their results done or test done and ordering medicines online so right now practo has over 2 lakh doctor profiles 5000 diagnostic centers based in 35 cities from all around india and abroad next is pharmacy you might have seen uh, the you know Uh, advertisements of pharmacy so this is one of the top healthcare startup in india and it has been founded by uh, mumbai based dharmit set in 2015 so currently pharmacy is being operating uh, at seven cities in india delhi mumbai bangalore kolkata pune jaipur and ahmedabad so they have some uh, more than 150 partner vendors now this is one more innovative startup blood sugar so blood sugar is founded in 2012 now what they are doing is see this is a platform where if suppose someone from any of the corner of our country is in need of the blood or platelet of those blood group who, which are rarest rare they can see the blood donors or this is basically a blood donor community so they can reach to this platform and they can see who is available which donor is available in my nearby territory because that is the condition where the urgency or we can consider this as one of the medical emergency urgency where you will require blood or platelet donors in no time so this platform connects blood and pl platelet donors and to those which are in need uh, need of it in real time so they have a strong community of 1.25 lakh patients active donors in india bangladesh and nepal so right now they could be able to reach 15000 patients so far uh, after 2012 niramai so niramai this is the example which i was talking about which has been awarded this year in 2020 for uh, best startup or best innovative startup in healthcare So this is a Bangalore based startup which uses artificial intelligence for pain free breast cancer screening. 
so ideally as a pharma professional we know that you know uh, diagnostic or diagnosis or the process of diagnosing a breast cancer or the screening is actually a painful process and this considering as one of the burning problem one of the pain point of the patient or uh, the particular healthcare uh, diagnostic process they have used ai that is artificial intelligence which basically helps them to have pain free breast cancer screening so in 2016 niramai has started and they or their advantage is they detect breast cancer in very early stage and its screening device can detect tumors five times smaller than what a clinical exam the conventional clinical exam can catch okay so this is one of the uh, innovative most innovative startup in healthcare live health so live health is pune based startup which is founded in 2013 and this is basically a mis system that is a management information system for healthcare providers now what they do is they collect samples they manage patient records they diagnose them and they generate reports and then then they send it through a technology or through a, a management information system to a billing and inventory so it makes a uh, a conventional or a convenient process or hassle free process for uh, all the stakeholders of the hospital so even they use uh, artificial intelligence uh, to you know process these millions of uh, medical records in their application next is emergency so this is mumbai based startup again one of the uh, innovative idea which they utilize they they are not using a technology but they are you know having an innovation in services so what they do is so this is basically a mumbai based startup which is into mobile app which connects people who need emergency response now when we see emergency response emergency response it can be anything so whenever you require ambulance that could be a emergency uh, response so with the help of qualified medical or safety or rescue professionals they use or they aggregate these people on their application so whenever you require these emergency services you have to just log in to emergency you have to activate your gps and within no time the nearest healthcare professional or the nearest qualified medical and rescue professional will assist you through this particular application in even emergency it is mumbai based startup and even ratan tata has invested uh as a venture capitalist uh, for this particular startup so even today this app has responded over 3 lakh emergencies helping patients during their critical hour next is bagmo so bagmo is kochi based startup and it has been founded in march 2017 so what they do is they address the lack of blood availability in rural india we have seen multiple cases we have read multiple cases at grassroot level at tier 4 regions of our country even there we cannot find any of the hospital uh, even we cannot find any of the medical emergency services considering this as burning problem consider this as pain point of our healthcare system bagmo has started in 2017 so what they do is whenever someone or whenever someone enters into this bagmo they have to just log in and they have to just uh tell us the particular requirement like plasma like blood cells like pl platelets so this application immediately responds to that particular request and they take care of traveling or to transport this particular uh, blood bags to that particular region because what or the usp of this is transportation of these uh, particular blood bags next is wafer chips techno solution so what they are doing is now they are using this particular patch or they are using a technology and this particular patch is basically helps every patient to you know identify uh, or you know to have a proper diagnosis okay so this is or this a uh, particular patch this is a adhesive patch which is being connected to android application via bluetooth so even this patch or this particular uh, device can be connected to your smartphone just by using a bluetooth 
and then it uses AI, artificial intelligence, and it generates clinically actionable report for further diagnosis and treatment. Now, the price of this particular device is the USP because vapor chips they plan to you know price this particular device for just thirty five thousand, so which is at cheapest rate for hospitals. Next is EZRX. This is Kolkata based medtech startup EZRX, which is founded in two thousand eighteen. So the startup's first product is AJO, which stands for anemia, jaundice, and oxygen saturation, and it is non-invasive IoT enabled device that is Internet of Things, IoT enabled device that tests anemia, liver, and lung related medical problems without any blood work and for less than one rupee. So this particular uh, kit or this particular product can be used by any of the hospitals at tier 3 and tier 4 and they can utilize this method or this technology for all the uh, all the patients which which you know cannot uh, which which don't know their symptoms of anemia or liver related diseases or lung related diseases so by using this particular system they can actually evaluate they can actually diagnose their uh, whatever symptoms they have Mediasha. So Mediasha is one of uh, one more Pune based startup which has been recently started. Now, I was talking about incubation center at early uh, early part of my presentation. So right now, each and every institution they are ensuring that they should have incubation center which will support startups. So in Pune, we have College of Engineering Pune, COEP Pune, and there is one incubation center which is known as Bahu Incubation Center. So Medi Asha is one of the startup which is right now being incubated at Bahu Incubation Center, which is a part of COIP Pune. So now what they have done is suppose let us consider some of the some of the kids they are playing in playground and accidentally uh, there is during uh, during whatever accident if suppose these kids are having suppose one of the kid is uh, having a fractured limb at that point of time as a medical emergency even at that particular point of time you can use medi asha product as a quick remedy and uh, what they have did is this particular product of medi asha that is fracto aid so this is basically a orthopedic splint and this provides early and instant Im immobilization of fractured limb so this is basically a hybrid composition and which uses or which gives higher strength to uh, set a quick setting time of three minutes. So whenever someone has this fracture immediately they can just wrap up this particular fracto ed product and by no time within three minutes it gets or it gets stiff like like a plaster. Okay, so this is incubated at COP Pune. One more startup is incub being incubated at COP Pune. Uh, so these are uh, one of the examples or one of the uh, startup at CYP Pune and last one that is Inito. So Inito is one more startup by uh, two IITNs that is Ayush and Varun. So one is uh, IIT Roorkee alumnus and one is IIT Madras. So now what is Inito all about? So Inito is basically uh, a kit which is connected to your smartphone. So they have this Android application, which is connected to this Inito device. So uh, this Bengaluru based startup, which is founded in 2015, what this do is, so Inito is allows a diagnostic test, different diagnostic test for vitamins, thyroid, other lifestyle conditions on single platform. So ideally there is no, uh, you know, mm, you, you, you won't need to visit a diagnostic center or clinic for these diagnostic tests. Even by this simple kit, you can diagnose your vitamin level, thyroid level or other lifestyle conditions level. Okay. And this device then connects to a smartphone and analyzes the trends of your data, which is collected using artificial intelligence and machine learning. And then by using this, they will suggest you remedial lifestyle changes. So suppose uh, right now we are in October. Suppose if suppose I'm testing a vitamin or thyroid levels for myself 
by using a inito uh, application or inito uh, devices or kit after two or three months i'll do it again so this will have a database of my own reports all the trends will be there in the system like what we are the reports or what we are the results or values in year uh, in october 2020 in november in december in january in february and similarly based on the trends based on the data this will suggest me my lifestyle changes what i have to avoid what i have to do so do's and don'ts will be suggested by this init only now this first test launched on the device was a fertility test so this is very interesting and that's because it is uh, one of the innovative application or innovative startup so this uses a patented flat lens technology to enable smartphones to perform real time and lab grade fertility diagnostic test now when we see the problem of fertility or fertility diagnostic tests are there even we have seen there is much more population there are uh, many uh, fertility issues or many of the cases where fertility is the core problem of that uh, just a moment i'll just plug in the charger so inito what they do is they basically use a sample of that pregnant woman so that pregnant woman's urine sample has to be uh, used for this inito kit and then this detects or the technology which is there in this inito kit this detects all the values of her hormonal levels and whatever uh, cycles or fertility issues are there and then it reflects it on the uh, ui of this particular app so this is ai based app and which gives 99.3 percent of the results like a lab test so when we see the prices of this ideally a fertility test today we have a chain of say uh, indira ivf centers so indira ivf centers or any of the ivf centers whatever fertility test they have at hospital level the charges it goes around some 10 to 12 thousand just to test the fertility issues okay but this kit itself is is of cost of 3500 plus it gives the accuracy of these fertility diagnostic tests are 99.3 percent so what they use is they use a technology okay so this is very uh, prominent innovation in uh, fertility issues so these we are all case studies of healthcare startup so let's find out what are the pain points so when you as a healthcare professional will try to ideate or will try to you know brainstorm for a solution for all these pain points for all these burning problems you need to consider following pain points these are some of the you know uh, the the most preferred or the most uh, attention has to be there for all these pain points in our healthcare uh, sector so we cannot afford to experiment on our patients so this is the reason why indian healthcare is one of the very last industries to be disrupted by technology so when we you know as as a part of this industry 4.0 or we call it as industrial revolution there is much more innovation by using a technology in our it sector in automobile sector in electronics even we see smartphones these smartphones are getting upgraded every day but because we cannot afford to experiment on our patients we cannot upgrade our indian healthcare system very quickly and that is the reason why indian healthcare is one of the last industry to be disrupted by technology so let's check out some of the facts and figures of the healthcare industry so india's population is reaching to 1.4 billion by 2025 and half of this will be at the age of 30 so which has been already discussed that is demographic dividend right now there are approximately 930 millions they have direct access to cell phones but they do not have access to clean water so that is the irony which our country has there is no central regulatory authority of health in india ensuring services and most of the citizens are uninsured so when we see the culture in us and uk 
even they ensure that everyone will have health insurance even that is the case where our country is lagging behind next there is only one government hospital bed in every 2046 patients which us has 345 beds so there is one only one government hospital bed in every 2046 patient even this during this pandemic we have seen the scarcity of the hospital management in all government and private hospitals next there is only one government doctor in every 10,189 patients, which US has 24.5 doctors, right? So this is again a scarcity of doctors. Next, 76% of Indians do not have health insurance. This results in the high out of pocket expenses incurred by the citizens of the country. 76 is the huge population. Next, a survey conducted last year, latter, latter year showed that 88% of patients would switch to another provider. So if suppose there is a patient who, who is actually getting a, a treatment from any of the hospital, so 88% of these patients, they would switch to another healthcare provider if they were unsatisfied with the existing one. Next one. So. So ideally speaking about the good things, what has been the biggest positive for the healthcare industry in last five years. So the biggest positive transformation in Indian healthcare system, which has been the onset of technology and the ease with which right now the people are using is Google. So whenever they visit a hospital, whenever they visit a clinic, what they do is they just Google it. So that could be one of the, or the only positive thing which we can you know, in turn, uh, identify. So this in turn, what has been happened is, so this in turn has made the doctors and the entrepreneurs realize that, yes, if there is an efficient and convenient way to make the patient pay for using their services, it should be win-win situation for everyone. So it should be ideally win-win situation for doctors, patients, as well as the businesses or the entrepreneurs. So remember that the primary objective of a doctor is to take better care of their patients. Everything else is secondary. Everything else is ancillary. So a business or an entrepreneur need to simply work on the basics. That is doing what the patient and doctor wants. So when you brainstorm yourself, when you ideate yourself, what you have to focus on what patient needs what doctors want okay so here you have to enlist the pain points of the patient you have to enlist the pain points of the doctors and then you have to make sure that your solution your product your service is actually solving their problem so i'll just quickly go through some of the healthcare pain points number one inefficiencies and errors in data sharing today whatever government hospitals we have whatever private hospitals we have, there is insufficiency and there are n number of errors whenever we share a data. For example, suppose let's consider we have a patient at Mumbai and he is having a treatment for say uh, 10 to 15 days. After several years, he is getting transferred from Mumbai to Kolkata. So again, when he is having getting a follow-up treatment at Kolkata hospital, we have this insufficiency of data sharing. None of the hospitals or very rare hospitals, they share a real time data of that patient from Mumbai to Kolkata or vice versa. So exchange of patient data in case of patient transfer from one department or from one hospital to another hospital. That is the pain point in current healthcare system. So you can build a platform, you can build a technology which will address this particular burning problem. So patient record sharing when done in the traditional way, it is not only time consuming, but it is actually inefficient, but it exposes the patient information to the risk. Okay. So even live health, which is Pune based startup, they are catering this particular problem. Number two is managing the massive volumes of patient related data. Suppose let's consider a government hospital. So have you seen any of the technology which is being used by government hospitals where they have a massive volume of data of their everyday patient, their IPD, their OPD, 
everything is being written everything is being recorded on papers and because we are using these papers we have this uh, we do not have this hassle free services in government hospital much more time is being wasted in this paperwork and when we need a data of say uh, before 5 years or before 10 years of that particular patient you have this critical process of identifying that patient's data in those bunch of papers number 3 wastefulness and unoptimized supply management there are multiple departments there are multiple equipments utilities which are unutilized uh, in many of the hospitals even when we see supply chain management in hospitals say from even uh, supply chain management of say medical devices or pharmaceuticals or diagnostic kits to the hospital there is uh, we we cannot we cannot uh, you know tell like they have this optimized supply chain management so here we can think of this unoptimized supply chain management wastefulness even uh, the cotton this is this could be one of the best example the cotton which is being used in hospital every day you can imagine the volume of this used cotton and then you can think how or what is the waste management process of this cotton so cotton is one of the waste which is being created at the hospital every day so there are syringes there are injections there are empty bottles there are expired medicine we have a bulk of waste which is being created at hospital site every day now the question is how these hospitals are managing this waste so waste management of hospital items could be one of the opportunity for you to ideate next is number 4 medicare and medicaid reimbursement so as i said uh, the insurance the health insurance 78% of the indian patients they do not have health insurance so there is a need of this uh, medicare and medicaid reimbursement number 5 remote access to telemedicine and mobile healthcare which is uh, a part of telemedicine even practo is doing that number 6 appointment scheduling again uh, whenever you wish to visit a doctor whenever you wish to hospital you have to take prior appointment and uh, there are some of the systems which are you know right now they are obsolete like you have to every time visit a hospital you have to make a case paper and you have to wait there only for one or two or three hours for this particular appointment so if you could use a platform like practo you can schedule this appointment for any of the hospitals or any of the doctors just by a click on your smartphone this this could be uh, one of the finest solution for this appointment scheduling similarly number 7 is registering and consulting so whenever you register or whenever we have this consulting in in any of the hospitals there is again uh, no paperless system for this so even you can ideate for this where right from registering a new patient Uh, to consulting of that particular patient and then prescribing him some of the medications this entire process can bring on one platform number 8 diagnostics reports and medication now when we see diagnostics whatever diagnostics reports we have whatever uh, blood reports or whatever uh, pathological reports which we have they have been not stored on one place now when we see the reports or the storage of all these reports or diagnostics we has to use a platform such a platform where all the reports or all the documents should be at one place even the medications even right now the prescription which we use uh, at at e point of medications or whenever prescriptions are being generated even they use paper so it should be completely paperless where on a single platform i should know what are my diagnostic reports what are my pathological reports and what prescriptions or what medications my doctor or my hospital has suggested me number 9 recovery and monitoring so there is no clear cut system for monitoring see let's consider a patient which is you know he has a, uh, he had a treatment of say 7 days or 8 days Uh, in hospital wards and after some 7 to 8 days after his 
treatment he has been discharged from the hospital but there is no clear cut recovery or monitoring system in the hospitals be it private hospital or be it government hospitals where the hospitals they can you know uh, have a recovery check or a frequent checking post uh, operative or uh, post ipd recovery stages treatment or that particular monitoring is not there it is not maintained there and last payments so this could be one of the solution for whatever transactions we do in healthcare be it in hospital be it in diagnostic centers be it in pathological labs whatever payments we exchange majority of the payments it has it is exchanged in cash but when we see the transactions when we see the accountability of all these expenses again there is a big question mark on the payments or on the uh, incentivized or monetized part of all these services so these could be uh, some of the pain points which you need to brainstorm to come up with a solution so if a healthcare startup can make the patients connect to to you know right doctors and they can bring in more patients for a doctor along with smooth management and enabling a, a, a healthy doctor patient relationship then and then only healthcare startup can make a fortune even you cannot break the core system of or you cannot break a core relationship of doctor and patient by utilizing some intervention system or a platform which cuts down the doctor and patient relationship you have to always think of the basic objective of this healthcare that is a relationship between a doctor and patient so you have to facilitate both to doctor as well as to patient now most of the healthcare startups have been created by engineers see the fact is more than 80% of the startups they are created by engineers and not by any of the medical or pharma professionals so engineers who have a very little idea about what a regular day in the life of a doctor looks like so right now engineers no doubt they have excellent technology orientation but what doctors or what patients they suffer or what problems they have in real life or in their routine life this could be identified by only medical and pharma professionals so what they need to do here is to spend more time with the indian doctors and their clinics and they have to make sure that they have doctors in their team so basically this is uh, like where where patients are increasingly frustrated uh, with whatever services hospitals are provided to patients even the doctors are frustrated they are increasingly getting frustrated with the fact that the patients are beating upon them so this is a tailor made perfect scenario for all the able entrepreneurs for all the healthcare professional to step in in this startup to step in in this particular entrepreneurship and they have to inculcate this trust and they have to revive the indian healthcare system so what or how they can do this is they have to use whatever solutions you have right now to solve these burning problems of healthcare you have to bring in a technology so that your solution can be easy to adopt can be easy to apply can be easy to implement and even when you see a hassle free or a convenient solution or a affordable solution or a preventive healthcare solution you have to use a technology in order to scale or sustain your business in this scenario so integrating seven star technologies to healthcare so right now we are in a age of seven star technologies like artificial intelligence machine learning big data uh, like cloud computing we have this seven star technologies and there you can utilize one of the technology for your startup now the third and last part of this uh, session that is to you know uh, identify or to get awareness about conventional pharma business opportunity so when we talk about conventional pharma business opportunity we have some Uh, typical options ahead of us now this is completely a different part till now whatever uh, things we have seen these are the next gen startup ideas or the entrepreneurship uh, ideas or the opportunities and this particular part these are conventional ideas these are traditional business opportunities in 
pharmaceuticals these are typical in pharmaceuticals so manufacturing packaging wholesale retail distributor generic medicine mall pcd franchisee opportunity these are some of the highlighted opportunities in conventional pharma business so first is pharmaceutical manufacturing now there are three types of manufacturing direct manufacturing contract manufacturing and loan license and whatever we manufacture like we can manufacture api that is active pharmaceutical ingredient we can manufacture uh, the excipients we can manufacture veterinary we can manufacture ayurvedic food and dietary supplements surgical dressing and capsules so when we look at the manufacturing opportunity either you can go with direct manufacturing or contract or loan license next is retail pharmacy the conventional one so you can start with a retail drug store in traditional way or you can utilize a franchisee ownership so right now we have n number of franchisee opportunities to start your retail pharmacy through a franchisee or through a brand so the brands like we have apollo we have in maharashtra like wellness forever we have jandri card these are some of the big franchisee players or big brands through which you can start your franchisee retail pharmacy then you have generic drug store even as a part of government of india's jan aushadi program you can start your own jan aushadi which is a generic drug store next is medicine mall m plus m <clears throat> next is hospital pharmacy even at private hospital or even at uh, majority of the clinics you can start with this hospital pharmacy next is pcd propaganda com distribution which is a franchisee marketing so this is a business where you can start or uh, you can you know uh, start this particular business with a minimum investment of 10000 rupees so there is now pcd there are n number of generic players in the market and what is your task in this regard is you have to market their product so there is no need to focus on manufacturing your task is to market their generic product so there are whatever players we have today generic in generic we have again three types of generic brand generic trade generic and generic generic so this comes under a pcd where you have to market their product so this could be a profitable business raw material supplier all types of raw material you can supply to a commercial pharmaceutical industry now pharmaceutical industry what they require they require api as a raw material they require packaging material as a raw material they require excipient as a raw material so you can utilize this trading opportunity where you can manufacture or where you can trade this raw material to all these pharma industries next is food and dietary supplements nutraceuticals now as like pharmaceuticals nutraceuticals industry or the nutraceuticals market is increasing or highlighting uh, multifold so nutraceuticals the opportunities they are increasing day by day and you can utilize this particular opportunity which is into nutraceuticals because there is no doubt there is high demand but one advantage is there for nutraceuticals there are less regulations so when we see pharmaceutical industry there we have regulations right from fda right from dcji uh, right from environment uh, right from other uh, regulatory uh, authorities like even fire and safety hazards likewise so when we look at the nutraceuticals it has high demand and less regulations and you can you know uh, initiate your business in nutraceuticals be it in uh, manufacturing be it in sales be it in marketing uh, even you can utilize this opportunity like you can be responsible only for manufacturing and you can outsource sales and marketing or you can have all your products from contract manufacturing from loan license and then you can focus more on sales and marketing like how you see the labels of the product like manufactured by xyz and marketed by abc so this is how you can divide this particular task of manufacturing and sales okay even probiotics could be one of the opportunity like of manufacturing sales and marketing so as a dietary supplement you can think of that as well the industry is increasing day by day 
in even in cosmetic manufacturing so in cosmetic manufacturing again there is high demand but there are less regulations only thing is when you use ayurved as a base or when you use herbal as a base in cosmetic industry this is the need of the customer this is the need of the market so even if if many of the startups or many of the businesses i have seen from pharmacy institutions uh, what they do is they have some herbal formulation in cosmetics but they you know fail to commercialize their product no doubt they have excellent product they have excellent results they have excellent analytical values or the the reports of their product but they don't know how to commercialize their herbal product it should it should come in a, in in a form of cream in a form of lotion how how i should have a packaging what are the regulations what is the market how i should Uh, or what are the sales perspective what are the marketing strategies to market this product so yes even in pharmaceutical institutions we have seen excellent herbal products which can be utilized under cosmetics which can be utilized as as a, a food supplement or as a dietary supplement or or all in nutraceuticals next is consultancy and legal firms as a fresher you can't do this but at a certain point when you have a certain experience working in industry uh, working in some uh, organizations then when you have some experience when you have uh, some of the things or some of the knowledge of the entire market then and then you could start your own consultancy and legal firm which will help different organizations in administration in setting up a new plants or in regulatory uh, management in marketing in brand promotion you can utilize this then printing material production this again uh, a pharmaceutical industry is looking for a printing material and there is much more innovation uh, to be done on this printing material right now whatever printing material let's consider Uh, uh a bulk packaging like bottle packaging let's consider bottle packaging or strip packaging or even blister packaging the raw material which we are using right now for printing material it requires much more innovation where you can utilize a waste free uh, printing material or eco friendly printing material if some if someone has some innovation which could which could bring a eco friendly packaging material then it can be one of the finest business in 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 manufacturing and providing this printing material to all these uh, bulk pharmaceutical uh, companies even uh, import and export of pharmaceutical machinery could be one of the finest uh, business and last that is online business no doubt online pharmacy is right now disrupting our uh, entire pharmacy but yes there are some strict regulations from government of india uh, for expanding this online pharmacy there are uh, some of the myths there are some of the merits demerits of online pharmacy but yes you have to accept the fact that there is much more uh, effort there is much more uh, potential in online business even in in case of pharmaceuticals as well so online pharmacy is uh, attracting investors online pharmacy they are attracting consumers and yes there is a green signal from market for this online pharmacy as well apart from these regulations so again in online businesses again e-commerce like how we have different aggregators how we have different e-commerce platforms where where people used to market their product and they sell it so there we have a aggregator of buyers and sellers so similarly you can create a platform like how we have one mg how we have farmizi so e-commerce is one of the opportunity in online business even in 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 the form of blogs in the from in the form of blogs in the form of uh, different articles or applications you can even at the uh, student stage you can create a revenue from this online business so this could be one of the other opportunity uh, in this online business so last is corporate pathology now we have like how we have different chains of say uh, the hospitals similarly we have a chain of uh, franchisee pharmacy stores 
Now, pharmacy franchise stores, we have seen examples like Apollo, we have seen Wellness Forever. Similarly, we have corporate pathology labs, for example, Dr. Lalpath, for example, Metropolis, for example, Diagno Labs, uh, for example, Thyrocare. These are the corporate pathology labs. And even as a professional, you can take the franchisee of this corporate pathology lab and you can start your own patho lab, your own corporate path lab at your nearest center, which will connect all the doctors, which will connect all the hospitals, right? Now, one of the advantage here is they have this central uh, lab management where uh, there is uh, there is a single platform where the hospitals, the patients, even you as a path lab owner or franchisee owner, you have the direct access to all the reports of the patients. Similarly, they have this entire central management for sales as well as lab management. So this is the advantage which you will have. Say, for example, if you are taking a franchisee of say Metropolis or for example, Thyrocare, you you won't need to spend much more or huge amount of money on the machines or the equipments which are there to be used by uh, all these uh, technologically efficient labs. There you have to build a, a basic laboratory where you will have all your basic equipments, basic utilities. Their central laboratory, it will have all these expensive, all these expensive machines and equipments. So you won't have to care about uh, this particular investment, uh, these high end machines and high end utilities, this corporate lab, this will take care of everything. So this was all about uh, all the conventional opportunities in pharmaceuticals and all the opportunities in startups. So uh, this is the last slide where I want to appeal all of you that uh, for getting all the updates, for getting all the news and updates and information related with startup, you can join this community where you can get all the information related with startup, all the information related with startups, updates, update, uh, all the videos related with startups on your WhatsApp platform. So you have, what you have to do is to join this community, you have to just open your WhatsApp and you have to uh, type yes and send it to 955220 So first of all, save this number as plan B, 955220 Once you save this number, you have to just WhatsApp yes to this number so that you can start receiving all the news, all the updates, all the information related with your with the startup on your WhatsApp. So this is all about from my end. And in case if you have any questions, you can just drop your questions, your doubts in the live chat so that uh, I could connect you. Uh, you can take it down our website that is www.opexindia.com where uh, you will get all the information, uh, all the access to all your all our skill development programs as well. So once again, I'm thankful to uh, your institution. Uh, I'm thankful to Siraskar sir for taking this efforts and arranging this particular session for all of you. I thank all the faculty members who are involved in this arrangement and last but not the least i'm thankful to uh, all the students for your active participation uh, for this session thank you thank you so much